want to apply to a junior level, entry level SOC analyst job, and it requires pre-existing experience. You can't get a job without experience, and you can't get the experience without the job. You know what we're going to do? In this video, I'm going to break that vicious cycle for you. I'm going to show you how to build real SOC analyst experience without having the job yet. And stay to the end, because I'm going to give you three resume bullets that'll be absolutely true. You can apply to your resume that will help you stand out as a SOC analyst. And I'm going to give you a proven strategy to find a SOC analyst job. All that and more. So let's rock. What's up everyone, Dr. Gerald Ayersher here with Simply Cyber Media Group. And today I'm tackling one of the most frustrating things I hear people complain about all the time in cybersecurity. How does this entry level junior job require existing experience? If I can't get the job, how do I get the experience? Well, I know you've seen it. It's frustrating as all get out. You want to work. You studied all the concepts. Maybe you got some certifications, but employers want to see that you've actually done the work. And the reality is I get where they're coming from. SOC analysts are often on the front lines dealing with real incidents, real compromises, and organizations, you know, they can't afford to have someone learning the basics while real threats are busting through their door and messing up their environment. And I know that this leaves aspiring SOC analysts stuck in this like impossible loop. Well, I know how to fix it. First, let's talk about what a SOC analyst actually does and what a SOC analyst experience actually means. So when hiring managers say they want experience, what are they looking for? Well, they want to know basically the following things. One, can you analyze security alerts and determine if they're real or false positives? Second, they want to see if you can investigate incidents using tools like SIM tools and log analysis, right? An alert comes in. Where are you looking? Do you know how to interface with these tools? Three, they want to know if you can follow playbooks to respond to common attack scenarios. Four, they want you to be able to document your findings clearly so other team members can act on them. You're not going to live in the SOC. So if you hand your work off to someone, are they going to be able to do anything with it? or not. Finally, they want to see how you handle making decisions under pressure because an incident unfolding can be a pretty big adrenaline thing. Now, I want you to know what's not on this list. Theories, definitions, knowing what a SIM is, pointing to uh, an EDR in a uh, multiple choice test, right? Knowing what a SIM is doesn't prove that you know how to use a SIM. Memorizing MITRE ATT&CK framework doesn't show that you know how to apply it during an investigation, right? So this is why so many people with certs still struggle to land SOC roles. The certs prove you understand concepts, but employers need proof that you can execute. And here's the challenge. You can't just say you can do these things. You need to be able to show it. And this means having real examples. In an interview, when I investigated a phishing campaign, here's exactly what I did step by step, or I've triaged over 50, 200, 500 security alerts. Here's my process. But it also means having it on your resume as well, right? Specific measurable accomplishments that you've done the work. And that's what gets your resume past filter and get you to the interview in the first place. So how do you get this it's, you know, coveted experience without having the job? Well, this is where platforms like Let's Defend come in and I'm really proud to be sharing Let's Defend with you. I wanna show you why it works, okay? First, Let's Defend offers what they call a SOC analyst path. They have a ton of stuff going on over there, but I'm, I'm focused on the SOC analyst path. I spent time in the platform actually evaluating this analyst path to see if it delivers on building practical experience. They do blend and deliver knowledge base information like, you know, what emails headers are and why they're useful to a SOC analyst. And then there's hands-on labs on like actually, hey, you know, here's a malicious situation. A fish came through or whatever. Look at the headers of this email. What are we dealing with here, right? Now, the labs and stuff impressed me for the following reasons. One, they were real world scenarios, right? Not just these like fictitious ones. You're not answering multiple choice questions. You're actually put in like a real incident situation. Similar comes in. So you're watching it show and drop into your inbox. You then have to take action on it. You create a case just like you do in a real sock and you begin working it. You actually include notes on what you found and indicators of compromise and stuff like that, just like a real SOC analyst would do. Basically, you're doing the things that are the same decisions that you'd be doing in a SOC job, which is awesome. You're working with real tools and pseudo tools, which I'll explain in a second, and real log data, real attack patterns. Uh, on the tooling, uh, the platform does point you to a lot of popular tools that are used by analysts all the time that are web-based. But for the internal tool for the SOC analyst, they have a SIM, which we would be using all the time. They have a EDR log logs as you'd be using all the time or a centralized EDR console. Uh, the one thing I say for pseudo tools is that the EDR and the SIM, they're a little bit more simplified 
instead of like kind of enterprise grade. But I think that they did that on purpose, one, to make it a little bit more accessible for students to learn. And two, to keep you from getting distracted from all the other, you know, things going on. So you could focus on just learning those skills that need to be repeatable. The second thing that impressed me is you get feedback when you mess up. In a real sock, if you miss something critical, it could be a really bad day for everybody. And let's defend when you make mistakes, you can learn from them. You can reset the scenario and try again. You might miss an indicator of compromise in the logs. The platform tells you what you missed and why it mattered. You get to go back and understand the gap in your analysis and build the pattern recognition that takes most people months to develop on the job. And really, this is how you build confidence, right? You're not just hoping you handled an incident correctly. You know you did because you've already done it several times. The third, and I really appreciate this, is playbook execution. So every sock is going to have playbooks. You don't download playbooks. Like every SOC has their own uh, step-by-step procedure for responding to common incidents. But inside of Let's Defend, they have playbooks that will walk you through executing these playbooks in realistic scenarios. So you're kind of learning standard procedures that every SOC uses and you're getting used to using a playbook. And this is what hiring managers want to see. They want to know that you can follow a process. They want to know that you can document your work. They know that you can escalate appropriately if you're confused or whatnot. Here's where it all comes together though. Every investigation you complete, every alert you triage, every incident you respond to becomes part of a portfolio that you can have. So in interviews, you can walk hiring managers through the actual work. Hey, here's an alert I investigated. Here's my analysis process. Here's how I uh, determined if it was a true positive. Here's what I recommend for remediation. So it's not really theoretical knowledge, although there is some of that in Let's Defend, but it's also demonstrable experience. And that's what gets you past the experience requirement filter. Boom. That's the, that's the magic behind how you break the cycle. Now let's give you more value with resume bullets and how to actually go get a SOC analyst job because I know you're not learning how to be a SOC analyst simply for the joy of learning. You're doing it because you want a job. So let's give you those resume bullets. After going through Let's Defend SOC Analyst Path, here are three resume bullets that you can confidently add. Number one, investigated 75 security alerts across multiple attack vectors, including phishing, malware, lateral movement, achieving 90% accurate in threat classification and prioritization. Now it's worth noting these values I'm giving you, 75 alerts, 90%. Those numbers have to be accurate for your work. You could do 200, 500, 600, whatever it is. And your efficiency of getting it right, your accuracy, that percentage will change too. So, you know, insert the right numbers here. But the reason you can use this bullet is because one, it's true, obviously, but two, it shows volume, variety, and measurable success. Higher managers see this and they know that you've done the repetitions, which is the cool thing. The second bullet you can do is add executed incident response playbooks for common attack scenarios like phishing using industry standard procedures. Now, this bullet shows you know how to follow a process, you understand SOPs or standard operating procedures, you can document your work. And these are critical skills that separate junior analysts from people that need handholding. Third bullet, perform digital forensics and log analysis using SIM platforms, EDR tools, and network traffic analysis to identify indicators of compromise and determine attack scope and timeline. And this bullet, this shows technical proficiency with actual tools that you're going to be expected to use in a SOC. You're not just saying, oh, I know what a SIM is. Let me describe it to you. You're saying I've used the SIM to investigate incidents. Yeah, ask me a question. Now, these bullets are powerful because they're true. You've actually done the work, which is the experience that you're demonstrating. So when a hiring manager asks you about them in the interview, I you know recommend walking through the examples, talk through it. You talk about what you learned, how you did it, discuss the challenges you faced, how you overcame them, right? Be honest, be authentic because authenticity comes through in interviews and that's what's gonna separate you from the other candidates and get you hired. Now I've worked with a lot of training platforms over the years and I'm selective about what I recommend to the Simply Cyber community. I only partner with companies that actually deliver value and Let's Defend does this. They're running a Black Friday offer right now, and they've actually given Simply Cyber Community an exclusive discount, which is super cool. You can get 55% off using code SimplyCyber55, and that's a significant discount, and this is a limited time offer. So if you're serious about breaking into the SOC, this is one of the most cost-effective ways to build that hands-on experience that employers are looking for. I'll drop a link in the description below, but my advice, don't just passively go through the exercises. That's not training you at all. I suggest you treat it like a real job. See if you actually even want to work in a SOC, right? This is a great opportunity to pilot whether you even want this job. Document everything. Build a portfolio. Take notes on your process. Screenshot your investigations. Track your metrics so you can build those resume bullets that we just talked about factually. Because when you get to the interview, you want to be able to confidently say, I triage hundreds of alerts. I've investigated dozens of incidents. Let me show you my work. What are we doing here? That's how you turn training 
into employment. Final bit of value on how to get a job. You might be thinking, all right, I got experience, I got resume bullets, but where are the jobs? Like, do I go to the job store and get a job? No. Let me tell you a strong move that could certainly help you get a job. So I suggest you target MSSPs and, and MDRs that hire in volume. So not every business is going to have an in-house SOC. Really only larger ones do. But many businesses outsource their SOC to a managed security service provider. And those places are just hiring SOC analysts all over the place because they serve multiple clients. It's basically a SOC analyst business. Companies like Arctic Wolf and Expel and others, they expect to train people and they hire more frequently than traditional corporate SOCs. These are absolutely your best entry points. So look for MSSPs and MDRs. Now, in full disclosure, you might get like an overnight shift for your first gig or whatever, and you may not want that. But honestly, you got to start somewhere. And if the opportunity is there, I'd recommend going for it because if you're crushing it, you are going to be able to either move, which is why uh, these MSSPs and MDRs have a lot of churn on employees. You can move to a better opportunity, a better paying opportunity or whatever, or get on a better shift. But whatever it is, this is definitely the technique. Look, breaking into a SOC isn't easy but it's wicked possible. I promise you the key is building demonstrable experience, getting those strong resume bullets, having a portfolio and being strategic where you apply. Platform like Let's Defend give you the practical skills and the resume bullets. Community like at Simply Cyber, join our Discord community, can give you the network and support that you need. And then the job search strategy gives you the roadmap. You've got it all together right in front of you. You just got to execute on it. Remember the code is Simply Cyber 55 and it gets you 55% off. Let's defend during Black Friday pricing only. So you must add Act before it ends. Please, if you're watching this video on replay in like May, I'm sorry. It is a limited time offer. I'm Dr. Gerald Dozier. I hope you got served value. And until next time, stay secure.